For those of you who follow these commentaries, you know our special guest at this summer's quarterly is Stephanie Link. This week begins a four-part series where we talk about markets, her background, and of course, what she does for so many of our clients here at 10 Capital. Well, welcome, Stephanie. Uh, we know a lot of you out there know who Stephanie Link is. You're excited to come to the event that we'll be heading off to here shortly. For those of you who don't, um, first and foremost, at least as it relates to 10 Capital, Stephanie is the Chief Investment Strategist of Hightower, oversees uh, that analytic group, runs a, f a specific fund that many of our clients are in, but there's so much more to your story, your background, so I guess we'll start with how did you find yourself into the industry? Yeah, so it's great to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I've never been to Spokane, so it's beautiful. Weather, gorgeous. So Good uh, time of the year. You set it up perfectly. Well, intentionally. When, when we initially talked about this, um, like, would well, you want her to come in January or February? Like, no, she will <laughs> never come back. There's a shot. We hope certainly you'll come back sometime. We'll bring her here in June. I will always come back. Yeah. I will always come back. So. Yeah, so I, I've been in the industry for 33 years, but I was very lucky growing up. My entire family is in the financial services industry. Um, my, my father, my stepmother, my brother, my uncle, my half-brother. I actually started by uh, one summer uh, working for my brother and interning as, and cold calling, because that's what you used to do as FA. So literally my brother gave me a phone book and just said, just start dialing and smiling. And I, after a couple of weeks of doing that, I said, maybe this isn't for me. What I did glean from them was all of them. It was the excitement that every day there was something new, uh, not only in the markets and in equities and fixed income and allocation, but in relationships as well. Uh, and that kind of gave me the bug to just say, eh, I gotta find something in the financial services industry. And I was very, very lucky that my dad told me whatever you do, find something that A, you're happy to do, yep. and B, that can make you financially independent. Yeah. And this is way back in the day. And so I had it in my mind that I wanted to do something business and uh, I went to college, came, came home right after Boston College and, uh, and was on my very first job was on a trading floor. Uh, in New York City on Wall Street because that's where I wanted to be. Uh, and I'll tell you that this trading floor, 500 people, there were three women on this trading floor. So times have changed. We've come a long way as women in this business. No, I mean, it, 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 some people might avoid it, but in all sincerity, I mean, to do what you have done, um, I mean, does speak to, I'm sure, a lot of determination, hard work, but obviously your talent as well. It was, it was very, um, I was very lucky. I had two mentors. And whenever I do presentations to young kids and, and, and teenagers and even kids in college, I, I do emphasize the importance of having mentors throughout your life, uh, personally and professionally. So I was on the sell side as an institutional salesperson. I was the director of research. And after 16 years, I wanted to see if I could actually run money. Because on the sell side, it was so different. You can market ideas and market analysts and talk about uh, kind of all different things, but you're not, you don't have skin in the game. I had a mutual friend with uh, Jim Kramer who was looking for uh, someone to run his charitable trust. Uh, and so it's really sort of fun that we met for 30 minutes, literally, talked about stocks the whole time. <laughs> we didn't ask about anything else, nothing you know, personal, nothing. It, and so just t testing your chops right off the jump. Testing my chops, absolutely. And, we, and it was fun, though. It was really invigorating. Uh, so I did that for seven years. I actually am the longest employee for Jim Cramer to this date. So, uh, and then I went to Nuveen and, and, and ran money there and was the global research director for five years. And then your question uh, about how did I get to Hightower? What I found on the sell side was not a lot of people want to pay for research. So fees were compressing. And on the buy side, there was a lot of um, active versus passive uh, dialogue happening. And fees also started to compress, even at the big firms. Uh, and I wanted to try to find a place within the financial services industry that was growing. I didn't know much about the independent wealth management space. I knew about the wirehouses from my family, but I didn't know. Well, you and I have been in the industry about the same length of time, different 
uh, roles and geographical areas, but it's changed wildly, oh. right? I mean, in the RI space, independent wealth, it's still a relatively new phenomenon. Sure. And once I did homework, I thought, wow, this is sort of an interesting story. Um, a, early innings in independent wealth management. B, Hightower, one of the industry leaders with size and scale. And C, a really great CEO with good leadership and strategy and, and vision. Fun story is that I did not know the CEO of Hightower. Uh, he did not know me. Uh, and uh, we were both on LinkedIn. And I said, I thought, oh, let, let me send him a LinkedIn message with my CV. Say, hey, I'm looking for exploring a lot of different options. And would you be up for it? And I thought I'd never hear from him. Quickly, I heard back from him and he said, it would be great to meet you. So then we met via, this was COVID, so via Zoom. He said, what do you want to do? And I told him I wanted to do all the things that you just said I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, been it's fun. different. I know why he responded to your, your, your message, but he is the same with us. And, and we found yeah. our way to partnering with Hightower for a lot of the same reason. The great people. Yeah. It was interesting when you're going through and, and figuring things out. There's good moments, tough moments, confusions. Um, but everyone on the other side, uh, certainly getting to know you a little bit. Um, just good people. Yeah. And you're like, you know, if, we're, if I'm in relationship with good people, we can figure a lot out. Sure. And, and, and again, always that same message of tell us about how you serve your client. It was a very client centric mm -hmm. in an industry that, quite frankly, can be very income, you know, fees and what's in it for me. And um, we just felt that, that that very similar ethos and bonded over college football. Our two teams met in the national championship, mine lost. Um, oh, so yeah, yeah, that's but a bummer. I, I'm Bob's hardworking guy, I guess he deserved it. So you come to Hightower, I guess one of the things that I've wanted to hear you speak to, because there's a lot of places to go run money. You clearly have the talent, the background to go do it in a lot of places. Um, in next week's video, we'll get to what exactly you're doing. Why Hightower? What do you think is the importance of that independent space? And self-interested is supporting people like us and the effort that we have for a client as opposed to just being in a purely institutional type realm. Sure. So. As chief investment strategist, I love to meet advisor teams and clients, and we're gonna do that later tonight, which I'm very excited about. I love to talk about markets, <clears throat> very passionate about learning something every day. And when I meet advisor teams, everybody does it differently at this firm, which is really pretty cool. And speaks to Hightower's flexibility. Yes. And I think that was one of our big concerns. We're at our anniversary, as many of you know, of joining is yes. what's going to change. Yeah. And much like we're coming into our clients' lives, you're coming into clients' lives, purely to empower, not to control, sure. which I think is really cool. And to help educate, too, right? So I'm ha And I'm happy to do it uh, to a variety of different client bases, too. It's, I do all, some, some uh, advisors like to do all women events, which is awf awful fun. So that's the one part, as uh, kind of the chief investment strategist, I really enjoy putting out research for the advisor teams uh, and videos about the markets and about what's on my mind and what's on, you know, what's going on in the world. Uh, so that you can distribute them to your clients and hopefully learn some things as well. And then as head of the investment solutions group, when the way you think about it is we're an internal asset manager just for the advisor teams, and we run about $5 billion in AUM. When I first started four years ago, we were at $700 million. So I thank all of our advisor teams for their support. But what's fun is acting as a partner yeah. with you. And the advisor. You're just that much practice. closer to the person benefiting from your services. Absolutely. Yeah. It's this nice combination, which doesn't really exist at other, certainly not at wirehouses, and I don't think it does at other independent wealth management no, there's places. A, there's a level of similarities of just how personable everyone is. Nobody is losing sight of the ultimate mission, which is caring for people who have taken their life's work and entrusting uh, it to you. Uh, we're gonna have to stop ever so briefly. For Stephanie and I, it'll be two seconds. Uh, for you, it'll be one week. We'll get into a role. Thank you again uh, uh, for being a part of this four-part series. Stay tuned. Uh, in the next commentary, we'll dive deeper into exactly what Stephanie's doing within Hightower, her fund, some of her different approaches to investing within that fund. Um, and again, you won't want to miss. So see you soon.